Right, everyone's saying, wow, I've never felt something like this in New York City. How rare is this kind of earthquake in this area? Uh, this is pretty large for uh, for the East Coast. This isn't uh, this isn't something typical. We haven't been geologically active in uh, in a really long time. Um, that doesn't mean it, it can't happen, obviously, um, but it is it is kind of a rarity. I, I think there was a four a few years ago down in Delaware, um, but this was this was actually larger than that. And now we're talking about New York City, major population center. You know, of course, eight yep. million plus people just in the city alone, millions more in the suburbs and beyond. Uh, Stephen, when we look at this on the scale of earthquakes, again, a lot of people like me are feeling an earthquake for the first time in their lives here. OK, um, but we know from California just recently in Taiwan, we see much bigger numbers. Where does 4.8 kind of rank on the scale here? Uh, the the earthquake in Taiwan, I think, was like a 7.8 or so. Uh, this is about a thousand times less because of the the scale that we're talking about, uh, the logarithmic scale. So it is um, it was it was a lot less, a lot less power in this earthquake than the one that we saw uh, in Asia just about a week ago or so. Right. Thankfully, and that and that's why it it. It's, you know, we've seen so far no major impacts, no reports of any major injuries right. at this point. Uh, th that is plausible with a 4.8 magnitude earthquake, even with this big city population, that a 4.8 could happen and nobody could be seriously hurt? Yes. Great. Yeah, there's, you know, I think, I think with, the, uh, with the, the size of the earthquake that it is and, you know, the sort of the construction that we have here, I think we're... We're reasonably, reasonably safe for this. This wasn't that large of an earthquake um, in the grand scheme of things. Stephen I, I mean, Holler. it was large. Right, right. It, it's all perspe you know, perspective, right? Stephen Holler, seismologist mm -hmm. from Fordham University. Uh, really great to have your expertise. One more question, too, is the length, the duration. We felt it, at least at, here at 30 Rock, maybe five. It, it felt like a long time. I think maybe five to seven seconds max. Is that standard? Is that just how long everybody feels something like this? I, I think that's that, that would be typical for what people feel. Um, I, I honestly, I was driving. I didn't feel it at all. Um, but uh, but my phone is blown up because of it. Um, you know, with everybody from, you know, Pennsylvania to Connecticut, you know, emailing me and texting me about uh, about this thing that they felt. So it was it was sizable for the area. Um, fortunately, there doesn't seem to be any damage. Stephen, one more question for you from, you know, some people that, that have experienced these earthquakes before. We hear the word shallow, a shallow earthquake. Uh, how would you describe mm -hmm. this earthquake? I think from the data I saw, it was only about a, it was about a kilometer uh, underground, I think. Um, but that was some preliminary data from the USGS. So I don't know. Uh, how deep it actually was. We're looking at numbers um, right now that just to, to help you out, because I know you've been busy, you were driving. Our depth is 4.7 kilometers here. Yeah, so that's not that's not terribly deep. Um, you know, it's about a couple miles underground. Um, and they can go they can go much deeper than that. OK, so not that deep. And again, uh, we're no. talking about a 4.8 magnitude and on the big at the grand scheme of things, much weaker. You said a thousand times weaker than that devastating, deadly earthquake that just took place in Taiwan a few days ago. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so Stephen, um, when something like this, we, we hear, oh, New York is not on a major fault line. Well, what does that mean? Can you help explain that to our audience? Well, earthquakes happen because these uh, the the plates that we're on, we're sitting on uh, the 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 bedrock that they're on. There are there are split fault lines in there where the pressure builds up um, because the, these plates are always moving around on the planet. As the um, as that energy builds up, they can slip and move. Uh, we don't have any major active fault lines. Um, in uh, in this area, we've been we've been geologically you know stable for a long time. Uh, there are fault lines that run through Manhattan, but they you know they haven't been active in 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 a long, really long time. Unlike you know the fault lines on the west coast, we talk about the San Andreas fault. Uh, that is that has been moving. That slipped you know um, 1908 or so when, when the big San Francisco quake. There was the uh, um, there, there are fault lines in, in other parts of California that uh, Hayward is coming to mind 
uh, that are hold, storing up energy in there, when they slip, they're going to be a massive earthquake. Um, but we don't have that kind of uh, we don't have that kind of situation here on the East Coast. And Stephen, um, we've kind of stabilized a bit. Finally, for people hearing about potential aftershocks, should anyone be concerned about aftershocks across the tri-state? There, there may be some aftershocks, um, you know, which will be just be the ground resettling down after it, it slipped. Um, but I, I, I don't expect them to be any larger than uh, than what we uh, what we just experienced. Okay, Stephen Holler, seismologist from Fordham University, very helpful to get your perspective and expertise here to weigh in on this magnitude 4.8 earthquake hitting in New Jersey and felt all across the East Coast and across the tri-state. Stephen, thank you so much. Thank you.